What's good, YouTube birds and YouTube bets? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Got a very, very intriguing junior middleweight unification fight going down tonight in Las Vegas, Nevada, aka Sin City. You got the number one fighter in the junior middleweight division, a guy that's on the brink of becoming one of the biggest names in the sport of boxing. He is the current top dog in the junior middleweight division. He's undefeated. He's from down under in Australia. So it should be a lot of Australian fans in Sin City cheering on their hometown hero. Tim Zhu is the name. Kata Zhu, his daddy, a legendary boxer, Hall of Fame fighter, is the game. And that's what he's looking to etch his name in boxing history, just like his daddy, and have the fame. He's on the he's on the brink. He's very, very, very exciting fighter to watch. He's what you call a smart pressure fighter out of the school of Gennady Golovkin, aka Triple G, a guy that's bringing pressure, but it's not, a guy that's not reckless like an Antonio Margarita who came forward with no defense, but he had plaster on his wraps, loading his gloves up, and he was able to uh, break down a lot of the top fighters like Miguel Cotto, Paul Williams, even though Paul Williams got the decision. Paul Williams took a hell of a beating in the championship rounds in that fight with Antonio Margarita, who goes down in boxing history as one of the most corrupt and dirtiest fighters in the game. With all that being said, he's gonna be taking on a guy that's not getting a lot of respect. A guy that's six foot six, throws punches in bunches. He throws punches per round like a lightweight. He's a guy that's very, very exciting to, to uh, see. He's a guy that is very, very awkward. And he's a guy that is very, very unique in his skill set. Got one of the better uppercuts in boxing. I probably rate his uppercut probably second to Anthony Joshua, who, in my opinion, has the best uppercut in boxing. One of the top fighters in the heavyweight division. One thing about Sebastian Fondora, he don't use his height. You remember Paul Williams? Paul Williams was another great fighter. Well, I say a very, very good fighter. That should have been a great fighter if he'd have used his uh, physical attributes. He was a guy that was tall, but liked to get in the trenches, liked to have those phone booth type of battles and didn't like to use the jab, didn't like to use his height and reach advantages that he had over all his opponents. And, and the same can be said for Sebastian Fundora. But that's a friend friendly uh, style of fighting and uh, fans are not complaining when they watch Sebastian Fundora fight. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. Now this fight is very, very intriguing. It's going to boil down to which fighter has a better chin? And I do think that Tim Zhu has the better chin. Now, up to um, Sebastian Fundora last fight, I thought he had a strong chin too. And I think he probably had a little bit too much confidence in his chin as he was a guy that threw a lot of punches, but he left himself open to a lot of counters. And that's what got him in trouble in his last fight versus Brian Mendoza as he got caught with a, a shot he didn't see. And he got put in a bad place, was on the ground. It seemed like he could have probably got up, but he was badly hurt. He probably felt that if he would have got up, he would have probably got stopped and maybe stopped in a devastating fashion. So he he said he basically, uh, an old saying, lived to fight another day. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But this is a very, very interesting fight. If Sebastian Fandora, that's a, this is a big if, if he uses the jab, if he uses his height, if he uses his reach, if he controls distance, he can win this fight. But we have not seen that in any of his previous matchups. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. Now, he's looking to uh, take on a guy that's very, very fundamentally sound. A guy that's a very smart pressure fighter. A guy that brings pressure to get his opponent to throw punches, and he's a beautiful counter punch in his own right. Don't give a lot of, don't get enough credit for uh, being a smart boxing pressure fighter. And I think uh, he's going to be looking to uh, implement and continue to uh, exhibit those skills versus Sebastian Fundora. So we will see what happens, and 
we will see what transpires. Interesting matchup involving two of the top dogs in the junior middleweight division. He'll be looking to cash in on this fight. This is a step to a bigger matchup for the winner of this fight as Earl Smith Jr., former unified welterweight champion, will be in attendance. Former undisputed, former two-division undisputed world champion Taz Crawford has went to the WBO, one of the belts that he hold at 147, and has asked them to put him in the mandatory position for the winner of this fight. And the winner of this fight has 180 days to negotiate a deal left. with Terrence Crawford. If not, North. the fight will go to a purse bid. Now, this fight between Fedora and Take the next right onto Tim Zoo will be North. a unification fight. As Tim Zoo will be defending his WBO belt in the WBC vacant title will be on the line in this unification fight. A lot of people are mad. A lot of people are said that Fandora is getting a shot at the title after a loss in his last fight, but it was a fight that he was leading. He was comfortably ahead in that fight before he got caught with a shot being North, reckless six North for three quarters in the fight mile. versus Mendoza. That shouldn't uh, preclude him from being able to fight for another belt in this next fight because it ain't like he got beat from pillar to post in that fight. Again, he was winning the fight. He got caught with a shot he didn't see and was knocked out. So that's just what it is. And he lost to a top five junior middleweight at that time. A guy that's going to actually be fighting on the undercard of this uh, Sue Fendura fight. And he goes by the name of Brian Mendoza. So we will see what happens. And we will see what transpires now. Zoo is a guy that's going to try to break down Fendura to the body. He's going to try to close distance. If uh, Fandora is throwing the jab, he's going to try to uh, do the old peekaboo style, bob and weave. But you don't see a lot of head movement for, from uh, Tim Zoo. That's one thing he's going to have to work on. When you go against a guy like a Crawford or a Spence, guys that have great jabs, you got to have that peekaboo style. you got to have great head movement. you got to close distance behind the jab, and he's going to have to do that. Y'all haven't seen that on a high level from Tim Zoo at this point. Hopefully we see some of that tonight. He's able to jab his way in, close distance, and punish a very thin frame, Sebastian Fandora. So you got a guy in one corner that has no losses, don't know how to lose in Tim Zhu, and you got a guy with one loss in Brian Mendoza. So this should be an epic, epic matchup. This fight is uh, on pay-per-view. Probably not a pay-per-view worthy fight, but it's a fight that needs to happen in the junior middleweight division. This is what you call a fight that's a good fight that's going to lead to... A great matchup in a big, big attraction. North for half a mile. Whether it be in Earl Spence Jr. or half a mile. Terrence Turn Crawford. So we will Boulevard. see what Boulevard. happens and we will see what transpires. Another thing Fedora is going to have to do is he's going to have to uh, try to back up Tim Zoo. And all of Tim Zoo fights, he's coming forward, he's pressing the action, he's getting his opponent to fight off the back foot. So Fedora is going to have to try to change up that. Uh, change up the roadmap on um, on Tim Zoo. See if he can fight going backwards. See, see, can he be effective getting pushed back? Now, will he be able to do that? That remains to be seen. That's why that's going to be a thing that him and his team are going to need to try to attempt to uh, do to Tim Zoo. Back him up and see if he's effective. He's as effective going backwards as he is going forward. And I think that's not the case, in my opinion. But we will see. He's never been put in that position, so we really don't know if he can fight going backwards. Because all his fights, he's pressing the action, and he's uh, making his, his opponents very, very uncomfortable, and he's implementing his style of fighting. So we will see what happens, and we will see what transpires. Now, again, Zoo must close distance, but he must jab his way, jab to the body, get close, and then punish the body, and that will pay dividends later on in the fight and possibly could lead to a stoppage for Tim Zoo. But um, Fedora must make him pay for getting close. Jab, jab. When he gets close, you tame him with that right hand and you turn him. He's got to, he's got to bring some different, different uh, style of fight. That's what this fight boils down to. We got to see something different for Fedora to win this fight. If we see the same on Fedora, he's going to lose to Tim Zoo. That's just what it is. He's got to do some different things. He's got to fight tall. He's got to use the jab. He's got to punish and make Tim Zoo pay a price for trying to close this and tame him with the right hand, get the respect with the right hand to make him a little bit hesitant 
to come forward. He's able to do that. He's able to stifle the aggressive attack of Tim Zhu. Then he'll have a chance to pull, in many people's eyes, an upset victory over the top dog in the junior middleweight division. I think Tim Zhu is going to be able to get close. I think he's going to be able to slowly but surely take over the fight, break down the fight with the smart pressure. I think he's going to get a guy that likes to throw a lot of punches, to throw punches when he gets close, and he's going to do a great job of countering Sebastian Fedora en route to, in my opinion, a late stoppage. I think he stops Sebastian Fedora, again Sebastian Fedora. I think he stops him in the 11th round, and he becomes the unified junior middleweight division. I believe that is going to be the case based on Sebastian Fedora's current style of fighting. So we will see what happens, and we will see what transpires. Follow me on Facebook, Gerard Briscoe, and let me know your thoughts in the comment section, who you like in this particular matchup. If you think it's going to be a knockout, let me know what round in the comment section that you're predicting the knockout to happen. Follow me on Facebook, Gerard Briscoe, like, share, and subscribe to JB Sports, the man, the myth, the legend, and I holler.